exactly what they have in store for insect enthusiasts. What's going on, Josh? Good morning. Oh, there's a lot going on, Rob. You know, I, butterflies are great. I love butterflies. We'll probably touch on that more, but I'm here with uh, with Ralph Santos here at the Bug Museum at Insect Lore here in Shafter. And you know, I asked Ralph. I was like, you know, so what's what's one of the fun things we can show people in in, in our first uh, our first hour this morning? And he went right to the tarantulas. And I'm like, of, cor <laughs> of course, of course you would. <laughs> of course you would, Ralph. Because really, there's only two things that I don't do, uh, and that's that's spiders and cockroaches. Not a huge fan, but uh, Ralph, you're here to probably educate people, you know, people like me, more on these, what you probably consider beautiful creatures. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, um, wow, this is pretty cool. Um, anyway, these guys are really, really awesome. They can live up to 20, 30 years. What we are have you here, kidding me? No, and the female wow. can live about 10 years longer than the male. Look at That's that That's how thing. it is in the, in the insect world where the, the female almost like dominates their survival series, like the um, praying mantis, she, the female will kill the, right, the father right. the dad so are, are all these females because you have a bunch of tarantulas here these are these are um females yeah because the 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 males have like little hooks on their legs so they can hang on to them when they're when they go to find a mate okay and this one here is the arizona blonde tarantula She's pretty nice sized tarantula. And, and what's amazing is uh, Rob and Linda, when I got here and I saw these little jars on top of their cages, I'm like, oh my gosh. So they have like, you know, some up close and personal uh, uh, dead species yeah, that, that you can kind of look at. No, they're, it's not food. They're not dead. These are their uh, shed, their yeah, molts that they shed. Oh, wow. No like it, lo it looks like an actual dead tarantula, but they molt. Yeah, this one here started last July. Sure. She was about, she was just right here, about, she was about maybe just maybe a few months old. And then a few months later, and A few months later, big. boom, and she, yeah, and then she did this in, in uh, Thanksgiving time. And then in March, she shed again. Now, what are some, what are, can you give us some fun-filled facts about tarantulas yeah. people may not know? Josh, will you ask them if well, they have any bird uh, tarantulas? They're very defensive. They like to hide when they're going to molt. They like to make a little, a little, grab a little corner, hang from there, and pull their skin off, their old skin. They okay. secrete. They secrete something, and it helps them to come out of the old skin. They leave us. It's shedding back, hanging from here. It'll hang on the top of the cage, and you'll see it dangling. And I'm like, "What is that?" When I was first getting to know these guys, <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> and I was like, and I would see one scurry under, that was already hiding underneath the little um, log, and I said, "That's its molt." Wow. And, and Rob, you said uh, bird tarantula. Is that yeah, what you said? Yeah, I, I think I think that's the largest type of tarantula out there. They're it, the size of like a dinner plate. Are you no familiar thanks. with the bird tarantula? Uh, Ralph's not familiar with it, but let's go over here. They have what's called a uh, Chilean rose hair tarantula. Oh, this one's a large one. She's large. She's our biggest uh, specimen here. Um, I don't pick this one up that much because the fact that she's been known to shoot her, her, her uricating hairs off her tail end. And that's something I didn't know. That's, that, that adds to the terrifying aspect of tarantulas. They can shoot their hairs into your skin. Yeah, they do that to protect themselves in the wild from like a, a fox, a hound, a beaver, a wolf, or sometimes even a person. A beaver or a wolf? Uh-huh. Yeah, out in the woods. A tarantula can fight off a wolf, guys. Come on. Yep. <laughs> I mean, so none of those exist in California, right? It becomes right? irritating. It makes them itch, and they run away from it. Okay. 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 And also, they do it to slow down the crickets when they're in there. Crickets are so fast, they shoot these little irritating hairs. The cricket stops to get it off, and she comes and ambushes it and Smart. eats it. They have, they <laughs> yeah, have to brilliant. Survive. So a lot of these tarantulas here are native to uh, this part of the country. The this, however, is the Chilean rosehair uh, tarantula. So they're they're only if you look at they have little uh, fun little facts here. They're from Bolivia, northern Chile, Argentina. But it, we have a few more seconds here. If people want to come to insect lore, learn a lot about you know not only arachnids but insects butterflies exactly. uh what time can they come here when you guys open monday through friday nine to five and saturdays ten to three all right stay tuned later on the hour we'll uh, we'll touch some more on some of these uh amazing insects slash josh, arachnids they have here in the bug in the bugsium <laughs> i'm looking forward to it josh I, I honestly i've got to admit and i've always had this this issue where i've imagined the biggest and the baddest bugs always being from like south america or africa basically far far away from wherever i am wait you know? till summer you will have some interesting bugs come up your drain and you'll find them in oh your my goodness don't tell me that well we look forward don't to that wait for then. it yeah. wait for it wow. guys really <laughs> oh, yeah. we'll, we'll do something lighter later later on the hour when people are eating breakfast maybe some butterflies or something that's what they're known oh, for i love so. butterflies Flies. Let's yeah. bring those on. And the Arizona Blonde, that actually sounds like a beer. The Arizona Blonde? It does. <laughs> it sounds like a beer. Sound, Jeez, it yeah. does sound like a wheat. Or it could be Aaron Perlman when he had hair. Yeah, a wheat beer. <laughs> questions of his own. Josh, what have you got for us? 
Oh, you know, we, we got a lot. Last, uh, you know, our last hit a few minutes ago, we, we went over tarantulas, things I'm terrified of. So I figured we'd go a little lighter this time around and talk about butterflies. That's what insect lore is known for. That's how they started, right, Ralph, back in the 1960s? Exactly, way back in 1969. And, and what's really cool is uh, you ship these out all over the country to students in classrooms or e even at home where they want to learn more about butterflies. And exactly. and the, the painted lady, that's what they're called. Exactly. The painted lady, that, that's the butterfly that the, the inventor, the owner of insect lore, found he could really uh, keep in a, in a habitat and grow exactly okay cool yes it was um, it was actually Carlos white is oh, he's yeah. an entomologist he's the founder of this company and he was a farm advisor for many years and he woke up one morning with a revelation and said you know what I want to raise butterflies and make it to home use and to schools so he went and had different uh, ex experiences with like the Buckeye the Red Admiral and the monarch that all those failed but one day he came along the painted lady and the painted lady thrived off the food that he made of its natural plant. Well, what's really cool is let's, let's go step by yeah. step. So the yeah. kids get these little jars and you grow thousands of these a day. Yeah. And, and they come in these little jars and then what happens? Well, here what, what it takes, it, it, they, they get these in the, cat, in the larva stage, okay? They're four days old and it takes them three weeks to go from caterpillar stage to the medium-sized caterpillar to the chrysalid like you see in here. And let's just, let's just be clear because a moth is actually puts himself in the cocoon, but yeah. in, if, it's, if it's a butterfly, it's actually called a chrysalid. A chrysalid okay. Correct. <laughs> and then once it breaks out of the chrysalid shell, it um, emerges into a butterfly and um, keep them in here for about a week, three to four days, give them like a slice of an apple or oranges, they'll feed from the fruit, the juice from the fruit, and then you can release them outside on a sunny day. And what's really neat over here, so, so in here, uh, now does the set come with an orange? No, I put the oranges in there to feed okay. them. You can use like an apple, an orange, a slice of watermelon, or even like just a one cup of water, three teaspoons of sugar. They, they just love sugar, yeah, right? Sugar. Because over sugar. here, if you want to follow me, LJ, uh, Ralph, Ralphie over here was showing me this. Now over here, you just have like a little display, and this is sugar water this is sugar on the sponge. Water. Exactly. They take the sugar water off the sponge right there. And it, all it is is just a cup of water, three teaspoons of sugar, and they just go down and take from the juice. Now, you and showed this, this is really neat too. Talk about the eggs. These are the <laughs> eggs. This is the female can lay up between like 100 and 200 eggs. The little green balls you see there are little tiny caterpillar eggs. They should hatch within like four or five days. That's really cool. That, that's a lot of eggs. And, and again, with these, with these little jars you send out from, you send out, you said thousands, thousands of those every day. Yeah, I think on a typical day right now in the springtime, it's between like um, 10 and 13,000 a day. In a busy time in the spring crunch, it's like about fifteen to twenty-five thousand per day. That's it. Only only fifteen to twenty-five thousand a day. It's like Santa's <laughs> workshop around here. It's really busy. <laughs> it is Santa's workshop. It, it is Christmas time, pretty much for insect lore here. If you get the chance, coming out to Shafter, insect lore, the Bug Museum. They they have a. There used to be just a warehouse here, but for the past three years, they have a really cool bug museum where you can take tours here, learn more about insects. They have everything here from tarantulas to beetles to millipedes to some beautiful butterflies. Um, if they want to come check it. Out. What are your hours of operation? Hours are 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, and Saturdays 10 to 3, okay? I'm here 9 to 5, okay, guys? All right, Rob, Linda, you guys, do you guys have any requests for, for later on next hour? Well, I'd like to share some of that sugar with the butterflies. I, too, like sugar. Yeah, who doesn't right? like sugar? I think <laughs> I need a little more sugar. sugar. She loves well, it. Well, you know, you, you got to have a little bit of sugar in the morning. You know, we wake up really early. We got to get energized. You got to get pumped up. Right? You know? Exactly. And exactly. if you yeah. eat your fruit, you've got some sugar yeah, in there, Yeah, exactly. Too, so. Good sugar, too, Yeah. they claim. <laughs> Do you have any requests for next time? Mm. No, just no more tarantulas, please, Josh. Those <laughs> things really spook me out. I think I'll they're cool see, to look at when they're can find, encased. I'll, I'll see if we can find another creepy crawly for you for, oh, I bet for you the can. next hour. I'm sitting next yeah. to a creepy crawly right now. So when all else fails, Rob <laughs> Finnerty. Not see the Goliath bird eater tarantula, except we just showed a picture of it, Josh. That's <laughs> right. Jaybird's on the J. What's going on? <laughs> oh, you know, you're checking out tarantulas. Butterflies, uh, uh, creepy crawlers, centipedes, millipedes, that's what we're talking about next. I'm here with Ralphie. Now, I wasn't sure what the difference was between a millipede and a centipede. I actually thought they both looked terrifying. Yeah. But one, one's ho totally harmless. Right. The other one can't hurt you. Let's go ahead and, and, and touch on, on the difference of the yeah. two. Okay, you have the, the, the centipede here, the common California centipede. He's got like, I believe it's like 42 segments of feet, of legs, but he will bite you. And if he bites you, he leaves a pain inflicted, like if somebody's holding a match to your skin for like seven hours. And this dude looks like he's a good five, six inches. Yeah, he's pretty, let's see, let's see. I'm gonna blow on his cage. Watch him go after the air I blow in there. Whoa, see there? oh wow. See? Terrifying, yeah. absolutely yeah. terrifying. <laughs> now, now the more docile one, I, I believe, is the, the millipede over here. 
The millipede is really safe. It's docile. It's safe to handle, but you do not want to put it in your mouth because it's toxic. Uh, it, you don't have to worry about <laughs> me putting that in my mouth. Yeah, Remember that. Toxic. Just put it in your um, mouth. <laughs> and a lot, of, a lot of birds mistake it for an earthworm, and they'll grab it, and they're, they're flying with it in their mouth, and they, they spit it out because they hate the taste of it. It tastes really bad. Yeah, that's an interesting And within a couple hours, that bird drops dead. So wow. if you see a bird just kind of soaring, and all of a sudden, he just... Woo, just falls. Yeah. Chances are he had a millipede yeah. dessert. Exactly. Okay. So exactly. But they're wonderful little pets you can touch and handle. Wonderful little pets. <laughs> wonderful little yeah. pets these things are. Let me show you. There you go. They they look. They, I mean, they look terrifying. Yeah, they kind of do. Especially Josh. You can't see it, but we're getting the close-up camera angle of all these. See there. Oh, what's that, Rob? I said you you can't you can't see it, but we're getting the close up, and the viewers are getting a really close up. Of these <laughs> yeah, I, I I know. I, I, mean, I apologize like, for people trying to eat their breakfast right now. I'm keeping yeah, a safe distance, like even though anaconda. they're even though it's completely harmless. This thing's probably this thing's probably a good what three four inches right there. Exactly. Now this one here is from California. Where's the, where's the lighter that's coming? And, and these are oh, all found loose. native lo locally. Yes, they it's are. It's in Josh's pocket. Yeah. yeah, the lighter ones are from California and Texas, and the red ones are from like New Mexico and Arizona. In Utah. Now, what's the main purpose of millipedes and centipedes? They're composters. They eat up all the rotten vegetables that fall to the ground and also decaying animals and insects. Okay, so again, quick recap. Millipedes, completely harmless. They look scary, not so bad. But the centipedes, these things are absolutely terrifying. You, you might find them in the fields. They are nocturnal, though, so if you ever find yourself out in the field at night, which hopefully you, you wouldn't be, <laughs> and you want to cross one of these, yeah, as Rafi says, don't pick one up. Mm -hmm. it, come out and see the Bug Museum over here in Shafter, though. It's been it's been open for three years. They have a lot of neat stuff in here. You do tours constantly with little kids and, and, and schools coming in. Uh, really quick, let's touch on the hours when people can come in and visit. We're here on Monday through Friday, um, 9 to 5, and Saturdays 10 to 3, and it's free admission, folks, okay? So call up if you're a school and schedule a, a tour, okay? And, and also, they're known for their butterflies. That's how this whole thing started decades ago. So you can also buy little kits, raise your own butterflies. They have all kinds of other kits as well you can purchase. So come on out if you want to learn more about insects, arachnids, creepy crawlers. <laughs> have a lot of fun, guys. I have a very important question. The millipedes sure. and centipedes with all those legs, do you think they'd make a good rocket? Oh. Right? Radio City Music Hall? Let's play the da 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 right? da 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 Yeah, I guess. I think that, so. they, they do have a lot of legs. Right, You're right. Let's a little dance. We'll check back with you in a bit. <laughs> All right, Josh, thanks, guys. thanks so much. What is yeah. going on, Josh? Yeah, that's right. What I've been disgusting learning. disgusting animals do you have to show us now? Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> I've been learning a lot this morning. Yeah, we've been covering butterflies, uh, really creepy crawlers like tarantulas and millipedes and, centip and centipedes. But now we're going to touch on an insect that we see a lot and all over the country, all over the world probably, and that's ants. I'm here with Ralphie. He's here with the Bug Museum here, at, here in Shafter at, at uh, Insect Lore. Give me some fun fold facts about ants. We're, we're looking at this display right here. Uh, and you said you're, uh, a lot of these only live maybe a couple weeks, so you're expecting oh, a new shipment to come in soon. But a lot of these uh, have ended up dying. They've, they've, you know, out, you know, their, their lifespan's over. But what's really crazy is they actually bury their dead. Exactly. Yeah, they have their own. Ants are really busy insect. The, it, the, all the work in here is done by the females. They'll move the earth, they'll make tunnels, and they'll even take their dead as they're dying, and they'll move them up into this burial ground right here, and they cover them up. As you can see, see this one's carrying a rock to throw over there in a little quarry. So, so uh, like a little uh, and you see rock. a lot of them carrying rocks, so they're they're actually putting the rocks over the deceased. Exactly. Wow. And then a lot of them are also still making hold, making tunnels down here. And, but the males' mo um, uh, role in here is they're the guardians. They're the they're the guardians of the ant colony. Like you say, if someone were to come from another colony and attack, invade them, they would they would protect them and fight. And, and what's the point of the tunnels? You told me uh, a few minutes ago that that if it's a if a different colony comes in, it's not going to try to go in another tunnel. If it does, there's a war that starts. Exactly, because it's their own property. It's their own little like private property, like a little country. So they, they they coexist and try to get along. But if it's a really foreign species and they see it as an outsider, they will start to engage in battle to protect themselves and each other. And if it's not it's if it's not as own tunnel it'll it'll cover it it'll up cover it up right and start another one wow. on the other side and this side over here pretty neat we, we got one more thing we want to show you about rob and linda and uh it, this is this is pretty weird because it, even though they look identical there are these giant beetles over here that almost resemble a stink bug and there's actually oh, a stink yes. bug in there that's smaller it's right there that's a stink bug right there i put him in there on purpose to show people when i give tours when they yell out, that's a stink bug. I go, it's not. This is a stink bug right here. And this is the darkling beetle. It's a composter. It lives in the desert like in cactus. They love to compost, okay? Mm. These guys are very important. They Josh, why the do they stink? Clean. 
and all they do is just go around and frolic and run around and they um, eat like rotten vegetables. Now, and now with the stink bug, they just put out some kind of gas. Yeah, You're not, not sure what it is. It just gives you like a spray. Not I don't want to find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't want to find out. <laughs> but but the but the larger beetles, the, the darkwing beetles, they don't do that. No, they don't. In do fact, that. they're harmless. And go ahead and pick pick. I'm not gonna pick one up, but <laughs> he can go ahead and pick one up. He says they're like giant ladybugs. I'm like they don't look like ladybugs okay. to me. <laughs> stink bugs are impossible to kill. I used to try when I was a kid. Counter and get him watching have a little race. Okay. Oh, he says that he can make him race here. Let's oh, see. wow. Come on, guys. Go, go, go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There they go. There and he says, you know, the, yeah, oh, Linda says they're almost impossible to kill. And, yeah, they, he said they don't even care if they fall off the counter because their, their shells are so hard. They can fall exactly. a tremendous amount of, of, of height from, uh, from a tremendous yeah, amount of height from, from a tree, tree, and it won't even hurt them. Is it an exoskeleton that they have? Nope. Yeah, yeah, like an exoskeleton. <laughs> All right, Josh. Yeah, terrifying. Well, if you want to come check out the uh, the bug museum, it's terrifying to me. For Ralph, it's like no big deal. Like, I'm sure kids will love it. Come up to the insect lore, uh, the bug museum in Shafter. And what times are you open? Uh, Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, and Saturdays at 10 to 3. And Ralph here also go, does some great tours for a lot of classrooms, too, if there's any teachers watching. Guys, back to you. Very cool. And something to remember, the ants. The women were doing all the work. Remember that? The females were doing all the work. Yes. You know, it's Sounds always familiar. the women that, that, that carry the entire species. It really is. <laughs> Honestly, I hate to say it, but I agree, without, Josh. without you, we'd be, where would we be? Where would we be? Miss I don't and Miss well, yeah, we have to go, in Josh, trouble. but we will talk to you in a bit. <laughs> Creepy crawlers. What's shaking, Josh? Well, yeah, I'm trying to educate y'all out there. I'm also learning, you know, a lot myself. Uh, the Bug Museum here in Shafter is part of the of Insect Lore. It's been here for three years. Insect Lore here has been here for, has been here for decades, though. They've really been great on educating the uh, kids and, and the public across the country on, on butterflies. And you they actually made it. They're the first available to make a. a to make butterfly growth in your home or in your classroom readily available. So that's pretty cool. But you also do all kinds of things with, you, you know, you have your own little uh, uh, praying mantis kits yeah. and ladybugs kits and whatnot. Now, looking at this, I feel like I'm at the Willy Wonka chocolate factory, but instead of making chocolates, they're making ladybugs? Ladybugs, ladybugs exactly. What the girls are doing here in the, in the ladybug laboratory is they're, they're taking the um, eggs that the female ladybug has laid on the white fibers. And then they have to harvest those eggs and put them into two ounce cups. If they don't do that within 28 to 48 hours, um, the male ladybug, the daddy ladybug, will come along and eat them. So once they transfer them, they wait for them to hatch out and they become like three or four days old. They put them in this little test tube here with their food and water beads. This is for the ladybug land as the little larva, the caterpillars, takes them two weeks to hatch out. So when a customer redeems a coupon by mail or over the phone or by internet, we send them to them on a two week turnaround time and we put them inside this little habitat here that we sell here at the, at the Insect Lord Museum. And do people or do kids or people kind of keep their ladybugs in there as like a quote unquote pets or can you use them in, their, in your garden or what do people normally do with them? Once you raise them, you watch the stages, view them for about a week and then you let them go outside in your yard or garden. Cool. Exactly. Cool. Now let's go over here. Now, now it's time to move on to the creepy crawlers. We all like ladybugs, right? Um, these are, are what I was showing in, in, my, in my little teaser a few seconds ago when I told you I was trying to keep my composure. If there's two things I don't do. There's spiders and cockroaches. Well, these are the largest cockroaches in, in the world. Exactly. The Madagascar hissing cockroach. These guys here, they're, they're very beneficial to the environment. What they do is they compost in the rainforest, okay? These are the guys that go around eating the dead, rotten vegetables, decaying insects, decaying animals. And you said out in the wild, they can get as big as your hand. They can get as big as your hand, the palm of your hand. Oh, that, my goodness. They're small because they have to accommodate to live in these cages. Now, I'm going to take one out here. Josh, did you say the cockroaches can get as big as your hand? Yes, these can get a, as big your hand in a while. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna put my mic up next to it and see if you can hear it hiss. Oh boy. Okay. If you're enjoying breakfast at home, by the way, you might want to look away from the TV for a moment here. Just trying to have some Cheerios with some sugar. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Just, a just cup of coffee. Listen, 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 listen. They're like pets here. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, I can hear no. it. Nope. No, not not really. No. Try to grab uh, Ralph during during the commercial break. You, you, oh, oh, ooh. okay. Hold on. Hold on. No, the, 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 these are these are shy. He actually said these are kind of uh, domicile. They've become almost domesticated because they're used to being here at, at the bug uh, at the bug museum. These over here, though, during the commercial break, he got these to hiss a lot. Oh, there it is. It sounds like steam's coming off of it. No, it sounds like spraying on deodorant. Yeah, <laughs> Rob says it sounds like spraying on deodorant. You're like exactly I'm, right. I'm spraying on some guard, um, which I do not wear. Uh, one more fun-filled fact about these, Ralph. Um, these guys are, um, they, 
Let's see here. Oh. As he locks them back up. Lock them back Thank up. goodness. Yeah, during the day they sleep, okay? They're nocturnal. And at night, they wait for the fruit that falls from the trees in those rainforests, and they go to it like we like ice cream. They run right to it and eat it up. So they're very beneficial. Could you ask if, him, if we, Josh, if we, could you ask him if, if, if those are in fact holdovers from prehistoric times? Haven't they been around for millions and oh millions yeah. of years? Oh yeah, they're, they're one of the oldest creatures on the planet. And right. if we were to have, uh, God forbid, a nuclear holocaust, anything, if someone were to strike the earth, uh, would cockroaches survive. would survive. They'd be one of the last surviving things on the planet. So they can withstand anything. They'll eat almost anything. If you want to learn more about insects, not only ladybugs or cockroaches, but of course, but beautiful things like butterflies and I don't, la man praying mantises. <laughs> Come on out, Bug Bugs DM here in Shafter at, uh, at Insect Lore. What are your hours of operation? Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, and Saturdays, 10 to 3. And Good morning, guys. That's right. They started uh, this really cool insect lore back in the late 1960s with the first company to really make it capable to grow butterflies uh, in a captive environment. And How then cool. you, you could release them. Really cool. They shipped them out all over the country. Uh, they're painted lady butterflies. But they also, in the past three years here in Shafter, they built this bug museum, and they have all kinds of insects, arachnids, not to mention displays of butterflies as well. But we like to touch on some of the more creepier, crawly type things as well. Uh, not to mention the painted butterflies were in space. They, they teamed up with NASA yeah, and they up survived up in space. Wow. We're going to talk about, we're going to talk more about that later. But okay. first, what do we have over here? We, we want to touch on one more cockroach for you. Of this course is a we unique. Do. Th of course we do. But the creepy crawly one, this is kind of a unique one. Unique specimen. This one here is called the giant cave roach. It exists in um, the Costa Rican caves in Panama. It looks like a leaf. Mm -hmm. It does. It, 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 it lives in the Panama caves and Costa Rican mm -hmm. caves. Okay, I'm going to kind of keep this little lid on it in case it wants to fly out. Let me go ahead and just kind of move it a little bit. So, so this one actually flies. It can fly. Uh, it can fly. I'm That's terrifying. It's, it's horrifying. Rica. Oh my goodness uh. gracious. <laughs> You oh, there you, go. you are crazy. You see the wings? You see the wings? Like yes, I, I saw yeah, the wings. Yeah, we Ralphie. see the wings. I saw. Let's oh. let's let's re, let's briefly move on to this little dude. Uh, I'm kind of done with the cockroaches. And Rafi said, in a lot of countries, they eat these things. It's like 80. Delicacy. It's a it's a delicacy. And there's like 80 grams of protein per cockroach. Four grams of fat. Four really, grams really of fat. For you. Yummy. <laughs> yeah. So moving on to, nice to the bar. Tanzanian tailless whip scorpion. whip scorpion. This guy here, he's like a crab, okay? And he likes to pinch. And he's he's very um very um aggressive. He's not afraid. Here we go. I'm going to demonstrate what he'll right. do. Aggressive already sounds scary. Okay, let's <laughs> see. Watch. Watch. Oh, boy. Oh, watch boy. Him, watch him. You see him turn and pinch? Oh, my goodness. He see kind of blends. Oh. See, that's like camouflage. He blends with the tree. <laughs> he does. You can barely see him, but yeah. he, I think he's kind of stuck. He's turned over. There so he, he can there jump he out at you if you're in the forest or wherever he, he lives. See him there? Oh. Okay, we, we're, we're running out of time, Ralphie. We, we want to make sure, let's, let's touch on two really quick. I'm going to get away from that cage. He's in the, in the glass and it still scares me. Yep. Let's touch on what's kid-friendly, what kids can bring home with them. <laughs> this is actually the praying mantis A case right here. It takes about three to six weeks. I didn't realize, realize praying mantises were, they, they grew in a casing. Yeah. It's like a cocoon. The mother makes the A case here out of like leaf droppings and puts them in her mouth and chews them up, regurgitates it and builds the A case. <laughs> Lovely. Okay? Wow. And then here's a, for your garden. If you don't, we have adult ladybugs, 75 to 100 adult ladybugs here. And you can to go in your garden. When the sun goes down, let them go in the plants and they'll just scurry off and take off and eat aphids as opposed to using sprays. Cool. So they're great for your garden. Exactly. Once once these praying mantises hatch though, and there'll, there'll be a lot of them that come out, you let them loose up uh, within 24 hours, put those in your garden as well. Exactly, Very exactly, cool. exactly. Well, guys, hope you're learning a lot today. We're gonna touch more on some butterflies coming up in the next hour. And we'll also touch on how they ended up in outer space. Really cool story, so stay tuned for that. Okay, you're gonna touch on that, but what you haven't done all morning, you have not touched one of the insects, have you? Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Next uh, time, I'm not, be brave. I I, uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what He's I can do. The, the ladies over here are looking at me really funny, like, what is he raving about? I, <laughs> cockroaches just terrify me. Is there this morning educating all of us? Good morning, Josh. Good morning, Linda. So, yeah, we've been trying to be educational this morning. The coolest thing about this Bug Museum and Shafter, which is part of uh, the insect lore uh, company, is that it was not only the first company to make it capable to, to grow your own butterflies per se, but they asked, well, as LJ gets a great shot of them feeding actually, let's touch on that first. They, they're, they're feeding on uh, on the juice from the orange and they have these long tongues, almost like straws. Yeah, yeah they like sugar. Proboscis. They uncoil them and they go into the fruit and they take the nectar from the juice from the fruit like they would, would a flower, the nectar from the flower. Hmm. 
Now, do they always, how long will they feed right there? Because they kind of congregate to the orange. Will they sit on that thing all day? No, they, they come and go as they feel thirsty. They'll fly into it and then they'll fly away. Then scurry around and run around and play. Then they go back onto the orange and they feed again. And we have a great shot over here, LJ, of the next one of the, of the, of the cocoons, which are actually called chrysalids. 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 Okay. These cool, right here are going to cool. be, these are going to turn coffee dark brown before they hatch out. In about uh, three to four days, they'll hatch out. So not only do you have the opportunity to grow these in a classroom or at home, kids can purchase these kits, but I was about to bring up uh, the cool thing about these uh, painted lady butterflies is that they were brought up into space by NASA. Exactly. Back in 1999, the space shuttle um, Columbia with, this, with its crew took them up there to see the effects of gravity. Well, gravity, it had some effect on them, but not too much because they had them at different stages. But we noticed that um, they took about a week longer to hatch and emerge and to grow which, you know, I guess in relativity speaking, um, if we go up in space, we'll slow down our growth by about a week. <laughs> wow, that's, that's crazy. So, so what, what, what was the whole point of, of bringing those up into space? I mean, did they really learn a whole lot? To see if it would affect them, and it did. It just slowed them down by about a week. Wow, so that, just about a week. But they still metamorphosized, and they still fed like they're doing here, and they still grew and frolicked and ran around. If you want to come take a tour of the bug game here at Insect Lore and Shafter, your hours of operation? Um, 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, 10 to 3 on Saturdays. And also, it's a gift shop, too, slash Bugzeum. So parents and children, grandchildren, they can, they can come over here with their grandparents and mom and dad and just buy. You know, we have a clearance section also, which stuff's on sale there, all the time. There's a lot of cool lot things of here cool. kids can buy. I mean, there's stuff from, you know, sand, yeah. space sand, sand that doesn't get wet, mm -hmm. to your own uh, praying mantis growth kit, to your own ladybug growth kit. And you also grow butterflies. Really great for kids to learn and also have a lot of fun. Guys? Ladybug and butterfly growth kits. I like that. Stay away from That's the right. cockroaches and all those other things, the millipedes, okay? Be careful. Uh, you know, <laughs> coming, up in, coming up later in the hour, we're going to touch on some of the most fierce insects in the world. So you'll want to stay tuned for that if you're into that sort of thing. Very cool. Thanks a lot, Josh. Yeah. And the butterflies, too. <laughs> and the butterflies, too. That's <laughs> right. Uh, I, the anxiety is starting to settle in uh -oh. just a little bit as uh, as we're, they're going to give me a little a little treat here in one second. But before we do that, just don't I want to touch on some of the... Don't uh, eat the I know. No, or don't a even say it. Don't eat that's or was oh, it the centipede? My goodness. Which one was toxic to eat? The millipede or the centipede? Yeah, yeah, you're funny. You're funny, <laughs> Linda. We're gonna touch on some of the most terrifying and some of the most beautiful insects from across the world though. First, let's talk about beautiful. Ralph, what's this thing right here? This this butterfly is, is almost like a small bird. This is like this is the famous blue morpho. It's from Peru. Beautiful. It's got iridescent colors, it's blue, and then on the back side of it, when it closes its wings, it has the um the, the pattern of like an owl, owl eyes to wear wow. itself from predators. And but then, on the other hand, if you're in Peru, yeah, also yeah, watch so out for this for the, this dad right here. Look at that. Rhinoceros oh. beetle also. This it, guy's one of the strongest bugs in the world. It's a rhino beetle. Beetle. rhino beetle. And and what happens when that thing lands on you? If it lands on you and it feels threatened, it will not let go of your skin. You try to pull it off, it will rip part of your skin off. It'll literally rip rip off yeah, your skin if you try to pull it off. Exactly. How do you get it off your skin without you ripping off, off your skin? What I've read is and, and, and learned is that you, if someone's near you, just get like a piece of like lunch meat or some cheese, uh, and have it be have it go on to that and let go of you and release and go away. Honey, go get the pastrami <laughs> and Colby Jack stat. Okay. And, and then what about this dad? This this this, this, this doodad right here really freaked me out. This is the, the giant walking stick from Malaysia. Okay. Now these guys, like these Tinkerbell. specimens are really large because over there it rains like about six or seven days out of the week. Lots of plant life, really nutritious, so the bugs and insects are going to be large. Oh my okay? goodness! Well, <laughs> just talking about it gets my blood pressure rising. Now my heart rate's really pumping. Uh, I don't do cockroaches, but they've really uh, convinced me, Josh. That's you got to just just hold one. Just hold one, Josh. It's a Madagascar hissing cockroach. Ugh. There's two things I don't do. Well, now there's three, uh, but cockroaches, uh, spiders, and also centipedes. Um, little kids hold these though, right? Exactly. And um, on tours, when I have tours, I let children view them and hold them and touch them and pet them. Okay. Mm. Don't get hurt, Josh. This is a female. My palms are all sweaty. Is it gonna? Is it gonna? Is it gonna it's sense it? No, it's gonna be just fine. Now what happens if that bites onto your skin? Back. I can't look. I can't look. Get it off. Get it off. Get it off. Get it off. Great. You did it, Josh. You did it. Now Good I'm going to scrub my hands so hard for about 15 minutes. Get, get, here, thank you. Thank you. 
There you go. Dude. You survived. My blood pressure just peaked, and now it's just starting to slow down. I think I survived. If you get a chance, come out to Shafter. Check out the Bugzium at Insect Lore. They have a lot of great things here for kids. Uh, not only can you check out hissing cockroaches, but also uh, scorpions and, and ladybugs and a little bit of everything. Yeah. What are your hours of operation really quick? Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, and Saturdays, 10 to 3. Monday through Friday, I'm here, 9 to 5, giving tours, so come check it out. He folks. gives great okay. tours, guys. Check it out if you get the chance. Guys, back to you. Really neat place. <sighs> I'm proud of you, Josh. Very Good proud. job, Josh. Good job.